Good morning. On my drive into work, got my new Samsung Galaxy S7 right here on the dashboard. Pretty slick. Pretty slick. Um, I've got it in its its little holder to hold it up there, so let's hope that it doesn't fall because right at the moment I don't have a case. So um, I'm facing it that way because, uh, well, because that's the way it was set when I turned this on. Um, so what should we talk about today? Well, how about the absolute shock and sadness that all of us Star Wars, when Harry met Sally, Sally, Postcards from the Edge fans are feeling right now, Blues Brothers, about the death of Carrie Fisher. I mean, this is, this is terrible. There, one of my very first crushes was on Carrie Fisher. I know that there's probably a lot of boys out there that feel the same way. Um, it's, it's, I, I mean, it's just devastating. Will it never end? 2016, will it never, ever end? I mean, is it really a curse? You know, we lost David Bowie and Alan Rickman. And and then there were people I forgot we lost, like Abe Vigoda. He's actually dead now. All these years of people going, is that guy still alive? No, no, he's not. He's actually gone. Um, oh, I just saw somebody. Uh, Doris Roberts. She died this year. Florence Henderson, um, who will always be remembered as as uh, Carol Brady, gone. We just lost George Michael, oh my God, over the weekend. How awful is that? And worse, worse, somebody goes, well, I heard it was a heroin overdose. And I'm like, where did you hear that? Because I have searched every legitimate news source. And as of last night, because I haven't searched them this morning, they hadn't said. So I think it's just terrible that that would be the last thing anybody would remember about George Michael. Not his generosity, not his giving, not, you know, him coming out, not his great voice, not his music. No, we're all going to remember that he had a heroin overdose. And actually, while I'm on that subject, um, he's not alone in the world. Do you know that heroin, we have a heroin epidemic. It's cheap. It's easy to get a hold of. And it is seriously, seriously addicting. It is seriously addicting. The minute you take it, it's like, you know, woo! And you have to take more and more and more and more to get that same high. And that high is addicting. So, quite honestly, don't, don't take drugs. Says the woman who hardly ever drinks and um, quit smoking. That's something else we should talk about. As of Saturday, I am a year of smoke-free. A year of smoke-free, so that's really good. But I want to get back to Carrie Fisher. Um, she is survived by her mom. Holy cow, her mom. Debbie Reynolds is still going strong. And really, when I had heard about this about Carrie, my heart sunk. She had a heart attack, she had it on a plane. There's not much they can do when you're having a heart attack on a plane. So you just got to hope for the best. Um, even if they are doctors and nurses, you know, she had, there were doctors and nurses on the flight. Still not much you can do. Um, so it's horrible. The fear she must have felt is, you know, I'm on a plane and I'm having a heart attack. Could you, could you actually hear? She could do a whole routine on that, you know? Um, and I, then now the world will never know. I wonder if that was going through her head because everything in her life was so out there for all of us to see, warts and all, her advocacy for um, mental health is was amazing. Um, but anyway, getting, so her mom, I mean, Debbie, the first thing I thought was like, oh my God, hasn't Debbie Reynolds been through enough? Hasn't that poor woman, I mean, when it comes to suffering, she's right up there with Elizabeth Taylor. I mean, and now she's lost her daughter. And her brother Todd has lost his sister, and Julie Fisher and Trisha Fisher, they've lost their sister. Um, her sister Trisha actually posted a very nice picture of the three of them together. 
And that was sweet. I just, I, I coming from having two younger brothers have no idea what it's like to have a sister. Um, least of all when your sister is from a different mom, so you're not growing up in the same house with them. Uh, I have no idea what that's like, but I can't imagine what it would be like if I lost one of my brothers. I mean, you know, that would be, that would be devastating if I didn't have one of my brothers and they drive me crazy. So, uh, my heart goes out to the, to, uh, her two sisters and her brother Todd, you know, she was the oldest. I can, I can, uh, I can relate to that being the oldest myself, you know? So it's just, it's horrible. I mean, and the people who knew her, and here's the sad thing. So right on my bookshelf, I have an autographed copy of Wishful Drinking. And I ordered it when she was at a signing, and I, off the top of my head, cannot remember which book signing it was. It's a bad thing. I don't have Providence for any of my books. My grandsons are going to have a hard time selling them. Anyway, it's signed. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to make it to this book signing because it was far away. But hopefully I'll make it to the next one. So when I saw that she had written The Princess Diarist, I was like, holy cow, this is great. She's going to go on another book tour. I'm going to have an opportunity to meet Carrie Fisher. Now, like all of us, I have a bit of a fantasy life in my head. And I just thought that she'd be sitting there and she'd be signing books. And I'd walk up and I'd say something witty. And she would look at me and realize that the two of us should be friends for life. That Carrie Fisher and I should have been friends for life. We both, we both have um, overbearing mothers. We both have great wit, although hers was better than mine. Um, we're both a little chunky. I just thought Carrie Fisher and I, I mean, not soulmates, I'm soulmates with my wife, but we could have had a kinship. And when I looked at her book and that autograph yesterday, I just, I felt even more sad that I'm never going to get the opportunity to meet her. There's so many things I wanted to ask her. Oh, and, and in the scheme of things, I mentioned Debbie Reynolds and Jolie and Todd and Trisha, and I forgot the most important person that she just left on the earth. No, not Gary, her dog. Her daughter, Billy. I mean, you know... I would say I can't imagine what it's like losing your mother, but I can imagine that because I've lost my mother. So I'm pretty sure Billy is not going to be watching this. But just in case somebody passes it on to her, my heart goes out to you, kid, because, you know, nobody loves you like your mother. Nobody tells you like it is like your mother. And uh, that special relationship, I don't think, I don't think she's married. So... The day she goes to get married, she won't have her mother there. But the way Debbie Reynolds is going strong, she might have her grandmother. I'm sure that her two aunts will step up, but it's not the same. My mother was there for my first wedding, but she missed the second one. And as you may or may not know, my first and my second weddings were both to the same woman. But one wasn't legal. One was religious and one was legal. So, um... My mom didn't make it. She didn't see the second one. And I just can't imagine this poor kid. And I don't know how old her daughter is, to tell you the truth. But I just can't imagine her. I don't think she's much older than her 20s. But losing her mom at such a young age. I mean, at least I lost my mom at uh, 40, um, 45. But... You know, that poor kid. So, and did you see what cinnamon, you know what? I'm not even going to mention it. Forget it. Flip, zip. Because, no, I'm not going to give them any more publicity for their atrocious, you just look it up. You'll find out. So, now I did see that she had finished filming her scenes for episode eight. Eight? Is it Eight. I'm so lost in the Star Wars thing now. I'm just, I'm lost. But somebody, um, and I'm really sorry. I think, it, I think I read it on Slate. I don't normally read Slate, but um, I saw it come up in my feed. And anyway, um, 
about how she set the tone. You know, these female heroines that we have now, we couldn't have if if somebody like Carrie Fishy, Fishy, Fisher hadn't embodied Princess Leia. I realize that is not the only thing she did in life. Um, but that was huge. Think about it. Up to that point, we didn't have that many female heroes. And she was snarky. And she wasn't a, oh, you saved me. Like the little stupid princess in Super Mario. You save her. And she just disappears again. Um, no, she was... Um, she was her own person. She was tough. And I can't see any other actress of that era... And, and she was 19. Carrie Fisher was 19 when she played Princess Leia the first time. Anybody else being that, that character, being Princess Leia. And as much as she joked about it, she snarked about it, you know. If, just go on YouTube and Carrie Fisher, George Lucas, and, and see her tribute to George Lucas that she did. Amazing hilarious you, you have to see it and um, but this I know this is running long but you know I just it's not very often that a star will pass away and I feel this devastated like it's a huge huge loss and I know that there are some people who go well she's just a movie actress and a director and a writer and you didn't know her She's not like she was your best friend. Well, in this day of social media, yeah, I did. Kind of did know her. We all knew her. We watched her go from a 19-year-old in Star Wars up to a 60-year-old woman. And we watched everything in between. Her marriage to Paul Simon that lasted a year, her mental illness problems, her admittance of drug and alcohol issues. Um the relationship with her mother we watched it all with rap attention and yes it does today and yesterday that whole weekend I was praying for I just I just had a feeling because uh, the first reports had said that she had um, that that she had lost uh, she had stopped breathing for 10 minutes and I thought well that can't be good but I'm gonna pray for her anyways please you know don't do this but, you know, some people say it's a curse, that the 2016 is cursed. I don't think so. I have an off-the-top-of-my-head kind of thing. I posted it on Facebook. I'll probably post it on my word, uh, on my blog, but on top of my head. But um, I really need to get in there, and now I can't get in there because I've got the wrong phone. Um, but... My thing is, the rapture's coming, and God wants all these people to entertain us when we go up there. I mean, let's face it. Donald Trump was elected president. The world has to be ending. Um, that's just a brief thing. If you don't like it, put it in the comments. If you do like it, spread the video. Um, so now I'm almost going into 14 minutes, which is kind of long for one of my videos. But my heart goes out to Carrie Fisher's family. You know... Um, I just, it's just devastating. And uh, so commuters, let's just remember the lesson. Um, one, that you can always count on a Wookiee to save you. Two, that, um, that you, uh, you, even when you're the one being rescued, don't give in to being weak. <laughs> and that you can survive anything and come out of it. But also, I think the most important lesson is none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. So let's go out there and make the best of today. God, I sound like such a little wussy thing, don't I? All right. Have a good day, commuters.